Now, look, for all my faults, I am a member of Gen Z, or as Liz likes to say, Gen Z. I know Mr Richards <laughs> takes issue with that, and we'll get into that a little further in the program. But uh, a recruiter by the name of Tammy Christophus Bayless has talked to the Daily Mail about the problem with Gen Z people trying to get into the workforce. And I've got to say, I'm not surprised by this, because as far as I can see, and, you know, I am one, I work, I have worked with these people, and I see them in everyday life. They were raised in a generation where everyone got a participation medal. It didn't matter how well you did in the running race at school, whether you came first or you came tenth. Everyone got a pat on the back and were told they were special and that you were just as good as the other. Children now, when they play in local sports, at a young level, there's no scoring. They don't even have ladders or grand finals. They're told that there is no importance in winning or succeeding, and so we are starting to see the results of that. Ms. Chrysophis Bayless says there's a new thing. I've got interview anxiety, the Gen Z people say. You have to be uncomfortable, she says, to get somewhere, and there's no concept of that. They say, this isn't my safe space, therefore I'm not going to do it. Then they're upset that they don't have a job. She goes on to say that uh, young employees are too scared to pick up the phone, first to a potential employer and then to other people once and if they get a job somewhere. I mean, for heaven's sake, it's the most efficient way to get anything done. But you might have noticed, no one actually picks up the phone these days. She even says that young people are so scared going into job interviews that she, as a recruiter, has seen them bring their parents in with them. I mean, I, I cannot get over that, Liz. Imagine being so scared to go for a job mm. that you take your parents in to, to hold your hand. It's a bit like Kamala Harris taking Tim Waltz <laughs> in to, to hold her hand in that first interview she She's did not with, even uh, Gen Z. She's and, got and no Dana excuse. Back. I mean, imagine walking in and thinking that you're going to get a job if you have to take your bloody parents with you in order to hold your hand. It's a sorry state of affairs which seems to be the state of play whenever we're talking about Gen Z. This is a generation that has been labelled the loneliest generation, the most anxious generation, and here they are just struggling to do simple things like get a job. It's very sad indeed, but as easy as it is to pay out on them and be like, yeah, they're snowflakes and they've been raised, everyone's getting participation awards, there's no real credit for merit nowadays. We've also got to take into account the fact that the kids aren't OK. Check out this headline from February in which a report by the Resolution Foundation found that people in their 20s are more likely to be out of work because of the poor mental health ravaging Gen Z. It found that, according to this official data, 34% of people aged 18 to 24 reported symptoms of mental disorder such as depression, anxiety and bipolar. And we know that this is something that is very prevalent in this particular generation. And I crunched the numbers because this is actually UK data, but it's exactly the same in Australia. One in three Gen Z report the same, experiencing depression, experiencing anxiety. And so something like applying for a job that we would just go, oh, well, that's a rite of passage. Everyone's got to do that. Heck, at 14 years of age, I was a checkout chick. Like, I was front-facing, talking <laughs> to people every day, did all the training, didn't think twice about it. But I'm part of a very blessed generation, I think the last... Uh, that grew up without social media, that grew up without these devices attached to us and this immediacy, immediacy, this competition of constantly competing with our peers and trying to look the coolest and best in every stage of life. And I think that has caught up with this generation something chronic. And we are, we're seeing it manifest even when it comes to something as basic as, as a teenager just applying for a job or early 20s out of uni, just not having the confidence to go for this kind of thing. But it's, it's not normal for human beings to be like that. Something has happened along the way mm. because we start off more confident. Um, I was playing table tennis with my four-year-old grandson today 
Uh, the fo rules for four-year-old uh, table tennis are you take the net away and the r ball rolls across the table. <laughs> and the scoring system is really simple. About every 30 seconds he shouts, I win! <laughs> And then he was going around the house, Great the four-year-old saying, I'm the boss. So that's, that's <laughs> how they start. So what has gone wrong with these? That's, that's just a normal kid. Mm. Uh, they start off with that sort of confidence. They start off being happy kids. I find it really hard to understand what's gone wrong. Jordan Peterson, I think, touched a nerve with this generation when he wrote his book, International Bestseller, 12 Rules for Life. Great and, what, book. and at the heart of the book, he's saying take responsibility. Mm. And my concern, I, I, I've had, I've, I had a furious discussion with someone on Talkback once about this. And I said, you know, you don't need trigger warnings. You don't need safe spaces. All you need to do is grow up. You're adults. And just take... And the, the key that Jordan Peterson keeps pushing is take responsibility. If you know someone in that age group, they just need to take... Give them a copy of Jordan Peterson's book for a start, which is a really good idea. It is. But I, the, this... Gen Z, as we say in Australia in <laughs> English, uh, this Gen Z, it was born in from 1997 to 2012. So it's, it's, it's not a big age group. If, if they're unusually distressed, if something has gone wrong, I, I'm, I'm baffled. I think they've had responsibility taken away from them. So, so mm -hmm. part of it goes back to what I was saying before. Everyone gets a participation medal, so there's, there is nothing special about anyone. There's no reason to strive for success because success or winning or whatever you want to call it is, is frowned upon because, you know, oh, it, it might hurt someone if they lose. Well, losing and learning how to cope with losing is just as important as learning how to win because yeah. out there in the real world, you have to deal with losing losing and difficulty all the time. And the other thing is that generationally things have changed. When you were a child, Kel, it was not unusual for someone to leave school at 13, 14, 15 and go off and get a job because they had to put food and money and whatever on the table to support the family. Of course, no one does that anymore because you have to stay in school, which in some ways is a good thing. But it taught people responsibility from a very young age. They had to step up and do something with their lives. Mm. And I don't think that exists to the same level anymore. They get mollycoddled. Kids don't leave home and go out and fend for themselves until well into their 20s now. Part of that is the economic conditions and the fact they can't afford a house and they can't afford a family, etc. But, but we are essentially retarding the growth of children mm. to the point where they don't actually grow up until they're nearly 30. Because so no wonder... No responsibility. Correct. You don't give them responsibility. Correct. So no wonder they can't go and get a job because, you know, you might have done it at 15 because that was the expected thing to do. But when you, you, you stop the, the growth of a child, well, they can't do it until they're 25 now. And also, let's couple that with the poor educational outcomes that we've also seen across the Western mm. world, whether it's... Uh, what do they call them these days? It keeps changing. It's not TEE anymore. What's it called now? ATAR. ATAR. ATAR, the ATAR scores, et cetera, and so on. We know that we're doing very badly. And the we're NAP failing land. Kids. Yes, yes. NAP land. Down, yes, down, thank down. you. Um, we're failing kids on that score as well. So is it any wonder that even after leaving school, their levels of confidence probably aren't that high in the world of adults? So mix that together with this mental disorder pandemic that we're seeing in Gen Z, um, <laughs> as well as well these done. poor educational well outcomes which we recognise they're being very poorly equipped for the next phase of their lives, mm. is it any wonder that they're genuinely too anxious to do something that previous generations have thought were extremely basic indeed?